I just greet you in the name of Jesus. I would like to give you a Bible scripture concerning hell. It's in the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 19. It talks about a rich man in Lazarus. And Christ was teaching about hell in this subject. And when Christ reveals hell to someone, the Bible always backs it up. So later on you can read St. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to the very end of the chapter. And it tells you about a rich man in hell. It tells you how you can see in hell, how you can talk in hell, and how you remember your family while you're burning in hell. It's, it's really sad because when Jesus Christ appeared to me, I was told by prophets and apostles, my calling. He said, the day will come that you will go around the world and tell what I'm going to show you. And he said, I'm going to take you on a journey into the middle of the earth where hell is. And there I shall show you the abode of the dead. He said, there's levels, degrees of fire for the punishment of the sins of the flesh. And he said, what you're going to see will always be with you, but then I will give you a just balance. I will show you heaven. I will take you to hell three hours a night and for 30 nights, and then I will take you to heaven for 10, hour, 10 times, three hours a night. And I will show you the abode of the dead in hell and the glories of God about heaven. And this is what your purpose and your destiny, for your calling is dreams, visions, and revelation. And as Christ was telling me these things, I understood being with the Lord and what people meant when God appears to you. It was like a, it was so phenomenal, so beautiful that the presence of God was filling my bedroom. It was like two in the morning. And a brilliant, brilliant light filled the end of my bedroom. And when I began to uh, look at the Lord, he said to me, he said, Catherine, he said, I need you to tell the people of the earth what is down in the middle of the earth, which is hell. And in the latter days, I will raise up others that have the same supernatural experiences. And he said, you will be like a pioneer. You will begin to go and tell these stories all over the earth. And I will get your book published and it will be in every major language in the world. Today, my book is in 89 languages in the world. I've been to 90 nations. And Jesus has done just what he said. He has taken me there. I didn't have the money to do it. He did this. And I've been to these nations and I've seen lives change. People turn to the Lord Jesus Christ because they did not want to die and go to hell. And what I've learned but going and telling the story is, is that people don't know. People don't have knowledge about eternity without God. And this is what's been hidden from ages to our generation that people do not understand what it is to die, your soul come out of your body, and if you're ready to meet the Lord, you're saved and born again, angels convey you to heaven and you go there. And there you get a brand new body. If you're 80 or 90, when you get into heavenly atmosphere, you look 28 years old. There's no law of death in heaven. But when you go to hell, your soul comes out of your body and you're taken by demons into the part of hell that you did the most wickedness on the earth. And this is what Christ told me and this is what Christ showed me. So he began to speak to me on a level of, I'll be with you, you'll not be alone, but at times you'll think I've left you, but I didn't, you just can't see me. And these things I want to share with you are very heartbreaking because I relive them sometimes. But Christ has the power, okay? His name alone, demons tremble, the name of Jesus. So he said, come with me and I will show you these things. And he reached his hand out to me and my soul come out of my body and I stood beside the Lord. I was in a spirit form, but I had all my senses. I could see, I could hear, I could turn, I could talk. And I knew my family was at home safe. And then I learned from the Lord as we walked among the dead and they talked to him. Um, I learned there was a place called the abyss, which is I've read in the Bible. And the Lord told me the abyss was worse than where we were walking. Cause demons would come up ever so many holes and they would beat them with uh, kind of clubs and stab them and then more fire would come on them. And they would cry and say, stop, stop. 
And they seemed to me like they were reaping the sins of their flesh on the earth. And the Lord knew my thoughts. He said, this is exactly what's happening. He said, child, this is the torment for adulteresses and fornicators and some backside ministers. And he said, we're going to go through the left leg and then we're going to go to the belly. And then he said, we're going to go to the jaws and one of the arms of hell. And he said, there's demons all through here, but because of me and my power, I protect you. It's what he told me. And I went with the Lord high into the sky. And when we got so high up, there was the world far below, no bigger than a basketball. And then out of the earth came these round brown things that looked like tornadoes. These were like turning real slow and back again. And I said, Lord, what are those? He said, those are are gateways into hell. He said, we shall go down a gateway. And he said to me, he said, child, look at my left hand. And he had a ring of keys. These keys, he said, are of death and hell. I can go down here anytime I choose. Jesus was about six foot four, very broad shouldered. He was not skinny at all. He had sandals on his feet. Jesus had a beard and a mustache. And his hair was a most beautiful color and it was down to his shoulders. And he had blue eyes. And when you look at his eyes, it's like eternity. There's no end to his eyes. And it's like he knows your beginning and your end without saying a word. And the peace that flows from Jesus is beyond any writer's description. And he said to me, Ahead of you is great horror, great sorrow, and great grief. He said, but I must show you these things that the world can understand about a place called hell. So we went down this gateway. And when we went down the gateway, inside the walls of this gateway was uh, demon powers. And when I say demon powers, I got to explain it to you, okay? There was some of them 12 foot high that looked like cockroaches. Some of them looked like huge spiders, 12 foot high. Then there was these creatures with fangs, with wings, uh, with bodies four foot across or five foot, 12 foot high and evil fangs, just like some of the pictures you see of them drawing demon powers. But they could not touch us because of the power of Christ. And you could hear them growl at us as we went down. And later on, I wrote a book with George Bloomer on deliverance. He explains what the cockroaches were and the spiders, which I didn't have the knowledge of then, because this was in 1976, God showed me these things. So I began to know and understand as we descended down this thing to hell, hell is real. And before, you know, I didn't really, really, as growing up in church, I heard hell preach, but the preachers just scared me to death. They would, you know, every Sunday we get saved because we didn't want to go to hell. But when I began to hear the sounds of the dead in hell, And we began to walk among uh, certain areas when we were down. We went to the left leg of hell first. He said, hell has a body in the middle of the earth. And he said, we will walk through these chambers. And he said, I'll not show you all of hell, but part of hell. And here's what he told me. He said, there's some parts of hell, child, I will not show you. It is too gross, too bad. And as I began to walk with him, I began to, we came down this corridor, we went to the left leg of hell first. And in the left leg were pits of fire everywhere. As far as I could see were thousands and thousands of pits full of fire, but in every pit was a skeleton full of dead men's bones. They would be no flesh, no blood, no organs, and they could talk, they could turn, they were a skeleton, but some of them had arms missing. Some of them had legs missing, and they could actually talk to you. (laughs) 
they had a vapor of smoke inside their skeleton. And as you looked at their bones, there would be a corrupt substance, like hanging, burning flesh, and worms crawling through that. And they could feel the worms, and they would scream and pull the worms out. And they began to talk to Jesus as we walked. And they said, Lord, we've been here many years, and we cannot die. We burn and no one cares. We cry and no one cares. He said, no man cares for our souls. And Christ would look at them and cry. And he was in the human form and he said, I sent preachers to you. I told you myself, you must be born again to spare you from this place. He said, I've done everything in my power to, to have you turn into me, the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I shed my blood my blood on, on a cross for you. So if you would repent of your sins, you wouldn't come to this place. And I watched as the, the corpses began to cry, no tears came. And I began to watch them reach up their bony hands and pray and it would really tear you apart because you would think, what if that'd been me when I was in sin, you know? What if that would be my neighbor? So your heart begins to change, you begin to think more about reality. You begin to think about eternity without God. And you begin to know that there is a real place called the abode of the dead, and it's Hades. I was an ordinary housewife, a mother. Now I'm a grandmother. And I didn't know, I, I didn't never have a high school, I mean a college education, I had a high school, but I was no Bible scholar. But God handpicked me for this journey. And every night he would bring me back around five in the morning and I'd cry and I'd weep. And then the next day he would take me again from two to five. And on one of the journeys into hell, he took me to the belly of hell. And the belly of hell was 17 miles high and three miles around. There was like um, stacked on top of each other jail cells. And you could see skeletons inside there burning and screaming and crying. And inside this place were souls of witches, warlocks, uh, demonic powers, people that use demonic powers to destroy people, and also the ones that served idolatry. And they would actually, there was a dirt ledge in front, like four feet around in Christ, would speak and we would run, not run, we would move up by his power, you know, because God has all power. And we would go from level to level and Christ would talk to him. And he came to this one man that was burning, he was screaming, he was on his knees. The Lord said he was on the earth, he was blind. He's blind in hell. He said he used his handicap to seduce many for witchcraft. I said, how did he do that, Lord? Because I didn't know. He said, child, what he did, he would, uh, he would work curses on them. And he would tell them, give them money for his handicap and things. And all the time, he's doing his witchcraft on these people, like young people, a lot of young people, he said. Teenagers and things. And they didn't know because they had compassion on him. And he said, these things are true said he did his witchcraft and the man heard him and he said, yes, I did. And I heard the gospel many times, but rejected you. He said, I never understood the sorrows of hell. He said, I served the devil on the earth. And when I died, this has been my torment. I've been here for years and years, wishing I had listened to the gospel, wishing I had uh, told the truth, wishing I'm sorry, I've been told the truth so I could escape this place of damnation. So this is what I learned. Even people in the occult, they come to my services. They think they're going to do harm to us. And God turns it around and saves them by many, many. Because they think that they're going to have a kingdom when they go to hell. They don't have a kingdom. The devil says, do you think that I uh, would give you a kingdom, share my kingdom with you? The devil tells them, I hate you as much as Christians. And there they're burning in hell. 
We're going to talk about uh, witchcraft here a minute, and what I know is only what the Lord has shown me and told me. We were walking around the jail cells that were 17 miles high, and there was a, to my surprise, there was a rocking chair inside this jail cell. And there was a skeleton sitting in here with an old little ragged doll, rocking back and forth, screaming and crying. And Jesus said, she's in great torture and great pain. And he said, I'm going to allow you to see uh, what she was before this happened and what she did. He said she was a soothsayer for Satan. And this woman is rocking, and all at once her appearance begins to change. Her whole countenance changes. So at first, she had on a beautiful dress. Let me see the dress of a, a, a beautiful woman. Then it changed to another thing. I think she changed into a uh, animal looking thing too one time. And in my book I talk about it, but she had many forms. And every time that happened to her, she would scream. And Jesus said, she got this power from the devil by killing people. She would get more power, they would drink the blood, and she would get all this power where she could do these things. And he said, uh, she was killed one day, and she came here, and Satan let her be tormented like this over and over and over. And it is a uh, drastic change, and she feels it, and she screams in pain, and this happens to her all the time. And she looked at Jesus, and she said, can't you help me? Can't you help me? And she reached to the bars and her, it was like fre flesh had burned into skeletons. And my heart went out to her and I tell this in many places and I don't know if it's Spanish, I forget the nationality, she said there truly is a woman of witchcraft in their circles that sits in a rocking chair and works spells and curses and hexes on people. And they, they said it's real. And uh, there was a young man down there. He was 16 years old. And one of the other men saw him, a friend of mine. He saw him. He was assistant pastor of a church. And his family used to be in the mafia. He was uh, a pastor now. And it alder one night, he was asked, there was a man there preaching on hell. Does anybody want to see hell? And he kind of laughed and went up and said, yeah, and the man laid hands on him. And he descended into hell immediately, and there was Jesus, and flames, and fires, and pits, and screams of the dead. And he said, we must hurry. I got three people to show you. So he runs, and he shows him his uncle. They're running through the fires, and hands reaching out to him. And his uncle had a suit on, and he had, someone had come in and shot him at his desk. And he appeared to him with a suit on in the flesh. Some people, God allows that to see. And then he burned up in the fires and he said, warn my son of the family not to come here, that hell is real. And he's screaming, he said, I cannot die. And then the Lord said, hurry, we must go the other side. So he went the other side and there was his other uncle on his other side of the family. And he had died a horrible death. And he said, warn my son of family that this is real, that I don't want him to come here. And on the way back, Jesus said, there's one more person I want you to see. And as they're going back, he hears a scream of a voice of a young man he knew, 16 years old, used to be his neighbor. And he had been found with his head decapitated because he had been in the occult. And he screamed and he said to him, warn the teenagers not to get in the occult because it's real. And he said, that I was serving the devil and uh, my, they took my head off and I ended up here in hell. And he was burning and screaming, and he was stuck between planks, burning. And the man, when he, the Lord brought him back to the altar, he was weeping and crying and saying, Oh, my God, I never knew hell was like that. And then I walked a little further with the Lord, and I was crying in the spirit. And I, and I was in the spirit, but there was no tears. And I saw a river flowing of fire and blood. and skeletons chained together with a big black chain. 
and the cries of the dead was echoing through the chambers of hell. And then you could hear the cries and the regrets and the moans and the screams of people wishing they'd listened to a preacher, wishing they'd listened to somebody, a woman, a man, a child, to tell them to repent of their sin. And the Lord walked me over to the river and said, look. And in the air, in the flames, was big black letters out of the book of Romans. And it said, lovers of their own flesh more than God's command. Men loving men, women loving women with no fear of God. It was the word of God written in the fire. And I looked and I said, Jesus. And I heard a man's voice scream, why wasn't I warned? Why didn't somebody tell me? Well, there was a place in hell where we went uh, to the belly of hell and all other kind of activities going on. There was other demons digging holes to bring more souls. There was fires, great fires, all through this and the screams of the dead. But there was one man's voice that was louder and his voice was so loud and screaming so hard. And Christ said, child, I want to show you something. I want to show you what it really means to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And this man blasphemed the Holy Ghost. I said, oh, my Lord. And so he took me over and he would elevate me up in the air, guys. And there was this coffin. It was open at the top. It was old wooden coffin, old timey coffin. And there was a skeleton on his back with real blood on his hands. And you were talking about the demons. They were 12 of them marching around the coffin with little slaps with spears. Because people in hell feel like they have a real body. They feel like that they're, they're in their own flesh. And he was stabbing this coffin in, in there with the, the man inside, and he would scream and torment. And they do that 24 hours a day all the time. And he screams to get out, and he can't. And Christ appeared, and he saw him, and he said, Jesus, he called him, Jesus, get me out of here. I'll repent now to you. I'll never do those things again. Let me out of here. I've been here for years suffering. I relive everything I ever did. And the Lord said, peace be still. And the Lord began to cry over this soul. And as I looked at him, I said, Lord, what did he do to deserve this? He said, he used to be a preacher of my word. He used to have a fine car, a beautiful home, a fine church. But Satan tempted him to steal from the church offering, and he did. Then he tempted him a, a year later to do something else in the church wrong, and he did. And he had the Holy Spirit. And he said the Holy Spirit began to talk to him and tell him, don't do these things, but he wouldn't listen. And as time went on, his heart was hardened. And he used to preach the true gospel, and he began to compromise my word. And see, Jesus said, this man had tasted my gifts, he had healed the sick, he had done many great things in my name, he had preached the word in my name, and he was full of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit departed from him because of the devil entering into his heart, and the, he, he allowed it. And the day come when the Holy Ghost left him, that the devil entered in his heart, and he began to change. And, and you know, as I, I am telling this, I'm thinking about many ministers going to be watching this. And they need to repent. If they're out there, they need to repent because that blood will set you free. Don't stay hard in your heart. And I watched as Jesus said, I came to him myself. I manifest myself to him. And he wouldn't listen. I sent prophets. I sent apostles. I sent, uh, for months and years, I tried to change him. But the day come, he wanted to open up a seminar in town against the Holy Ghost, teach against him knowing better. He knew better. And he said what happened, he was killed in a car wreck when he left the church. And this is where he is. And he said, there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. And we just left there crying. I did too. But 
as Christ and I went on our journey night after night, what I learned, he talked about his blood in hell, that if they had received him, no matter what they did, he would have washed them clean by his power and his blood. Because when he was crucified, that's why he did that, to save us from eternal damnation. If we would believe he was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then I learned something. As I'm walking with him and talking with him, I learned out of the book of Galatians, there's 17 works of our flesh. He took and he showed me a valley full of murderers. They had died on the earth. They were, their main thing they did in their life was to murder people. They had to be millions. And I began to look at a vast number. They were skeletons chained together. And they were burning and screaming. And then he said, I want to show you people that have hate in their heart. He showed me a valley without number. And these were also uh, chained together, burning and screaming. And demons walking through tormenting them. And some of them were literally pulled apart and taken all over hell and they were screaming. Each part of the body would scream. And I thought, oh my God, what a torment. And then um, he showed me like people in the cult, like I told you, in, in the center of hell. He showed me the murderers, he showed me the haters, he showed me the ones that are prejudiced. This is a subject that a lot of people don't like to talk about, but God does not see color. Listen, love knows no color of our skin. And what you have to do is love you one another as Christ loved us. And we have to watch what we say because that brings roots of bitterness and hatefulness. And in hell, there was a section for people like that. There was a section in hell for the hypocrites. They were in the heart of hell. It was a heart of hell as big as a football field. And around the base of it was sewers from the earth that run around it. The stink was beyond your belief. And in the midst of this is rats. Rats big as uh, 70 pounds. They're real, they're not a spirit. And they bite on these souls. The torment of things you just don't understand because it's hidden from you. But as you look at this and as you listen, and you understand the knowledge that's been hid from us, revelation knowledge. God wants us to see and know these things so we do not go to hell. God wants us to have a, a, a knowledge and wisdom of what's down in the middle of the earth. And when God begins to show somebody these things, it's earth shaking. On this journey in hell, I was one night walking with the Lord and he said, I'm going to show you the fun center in hell. It's like a Roman theater, and the devil is setting up in his throne at the top of this big rock place. It was all rocks. And it was similar to a Roman theater where they used to torment the men, you know, and kill them, let the lions come out and eat them. Well, here was a Satan on his throne. He had a book out on a, on a big... Uh, he was in a chair, and the book was on a, like a throne, Okay. And there was names on that. And then the demons had went through hell and picked out certain people and had them lined up. All you see skeletons, you know, and they were men and women, at the top of their voices, and they were crying. And the Lord said, this is horrible, but I want you to tell the people of the world about it. The devil would throw his head back and roar and laugh. And you could see him, he was solid looking. He had big horns, his face was red looking. He was very, very demonic looking. He looked kind of like the old movie, The Legend, is what he looked like. Had the hoof feet and everything. And he's sitting up there, and he's huge. He's so big. And they bring these uh, people before the throne. The first, I think it was a man. And all around the edges, there's these demons with spears and growling and laughing. And they brought this uh, person up front of the throne, and uh, he opens up this book, and he said, Well, I see... Uh, when you were on the earth in uh, the beginning, you used to preach the gospel. That's what he called it, the gospel. And according to my report, you got many people to turn 
and their way stopped. The, he watched how he worded it, okay? He said, you got many people to turn from uh, darkness into light. That's what he said. And he said, I see here a list of the things you did. So what we did, the devil looked at him and said, we sent out a crew of demons to stop you. Said we sent them out to come and to stop your works because you were doing too much uh, in the light. That's how he would word it. And he said, uh, we deceived you and then I set a trap for you and killed you when you were in deep sin and that's why you're in hell. That's what he told him. He said, I didn't give you a chance to repent. Said God, he did say this, he said, God has grace and mercy, why do not? He said, I have no mercy. And he said, all those that were in line with you, I did the same to them. They used to be believers on the earth. And I thought about it and I looked at the Lord. I said, Lord, he is truly a deceiver and a master, art a master. He said, yes, child, it says all through the book, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he deceived these people that you see in line. And right at their vulnerable state, he killed them because they, they uh, were in traps. They were in cages. In, in snarled by him, I should say, in snarled by him. And the devil began to laugh, and he said, uh, tormentors, come and get him, get her, him. What happened, she, this corpse was standing there, and they would each one would come and pull an arm off, pull the head off, the legs off, and, and the tarsal they had. So they would take that body where they pulled it apart, and they would scream. Every piece of that body would scream for the other part, and they would take it all over hell and bury it laughing. After all this is done, then they scream so loud, their screams are heard. And I don't know by who, but he said, God has mercy and sends power and puts them all back together again. Now that's horrible. That's horrible. And you think about what a, what a wicked, wicked devil is. And you better get mad at him. You better get really angry in the name of Jesus. You better stand up, fight for your family because he's real. It's an unseen force, and that's why I preach. That's why I pray, and that's why I travel, to tell people, you know, it, it, to wake up, you know, time is short. The demons in hell, they can take on many shapes, okay? You can see one, like, three inches high would uh, swirl around the skulls of people. Say, we deceived you, we deceived you. You could have had Jesus, but we deceived you with the lust of your flesh more than God's commandments. And they would curse and blaspheme God. Now these in hell I've seen like animal creatures, okay? It may have been an illusion, okay? Because they are illusions in hell. The devil brings illusions, a false paradise and everything. But I've seen these with corpses on the backs of them also and burning and screaming. Even the horses was on fire. I was walking with the Lord on the valley of the shadow of death and it was crawling in the muck beside me. It was huge, like a big bear. But I never saw its face, I just saw its backside. But I did see them in hell that looked like humongous bears and I think they've taken on the forms of the animals, you know, to bring more torture to people and more... Uh, I really believe that as I'm even talking to you, I really believe that they have done this to bring heartache, more heartache to the people, like seeing a horse or a, a bear or something like that. Because they're all demons, they're devils. We go to the left arm of hell. And then the left arm of hell is a snake as big as a train, a locomotive. And it's real, it's not a spirit. And he said, look at this child. And when I did, this snake would send fire out of its mouth and would come like three feet from us and go back. And the head of this snake was big as a locomotive train. That's how big. And he said, this snake will hit the earth when the world, the church is caught away. That's exactly what he said. And so I learned that all of these vicious creatures, heartless, have no mercy. They have no pity. The people that go to hell, they, they, they know they're doomed for the lake of fire. And they take out all their vengeance on one soul. A couple of times when God was, Jesus was showing me through the pits and the fires and the hypocrites in the heart of hell, and I went in there, I was so afraid. 
And a couple of times I didn't see the Lord. He allowed it. He allowed me to suffer in hell too, in the jaws of hell. And let me really feel like for a few minutes what it was like to be lost in hell. It's horrible. And with no relief or no help. And he did that because of the revelation of hell like John the Revelator had. And when you're chosen of the Lord to do certain things, he wants you to experience certain things. So when I was there with the Lord, I began to understand the living word of God. And I also saw, I talk about in the book of Revelations, the beast, and in the book of Daniel, with the seven heads. I saw that beast in the, in the middle of hell roaming and, and growling. The neck of that beast was about maybe, I don't know, real, real long. I didn't have, it was maybe five feet each neck. And on their heads was a crown. And their teeth, they were real. It was not a spirit. Their teeth are like razor blades. They go backwards and forwards. And he said these are seven major kingdoms against the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he told me. He said, child, these are seven major doctrines that do not preach the truth of Jesus Christ in the whole earth. And it comes out of hell. And he told me uh, about the abyss. He said there was demons and uh, evil powers down there so bad that if he was to release them, they would destroy the whole earth. That's how vicious they are. They're in chains and in jail cells. And they scream and growl and curse and do black things. And we have to think about this. A place called Outer Darkness. Uh, I could hear demons converse, and Jesus let me hear it, okay? He said that he wanted me to understand how we're attacked by demon powers. He said that, um, I want you to listen to what they're saying. There was groups of demons conversing and talking. And say you have an aunt, okay, say, that lives in Georgia, and she's saved and full of the Holy Spirit, loves God, and goes to church. And the blood covenant keeps her, her family, her loved ones, okay? But say she has a niece in New York City that is in the street, she's on drugs, and the aunt's always praying for her. So these demons will send attacks to this child that that she don't understand about the blood, she don't understand about the covenant, and cause her great grief. Or they will go to a, a church where the power of God is moving, there's young people come in that mock the Lord, and they will speak to them sitting in the churches, and they will cause great commotion, even on, outside the church. They do this to stop the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what the Lord told me. He said, where he has a band of angels that fight for the truth, there's groups of demons that go up to stop the gospel and from people believing. Like, for instance, they were talking about going to this person uh, that didn't have any faith, didn't believe in, cause chaos, you know, like uh, fires or, or all kind of stuff. And what saves us from that is loving the Lord, having faith in God and believing it. I'm just telling you some of the strategies that they use uh, even in one of the wars that broke out, I mean, it's coming to me, one many years ago, uh, there was angels actually appeared to these men, the leaders, about the war and told them not to have that war. Angels came and told them, and they still had the war. So we don't know, you know, we don't know. And, but... We have to trust the Lord is the main thing and faith in God and be born again. But even when you're saved, we get attacks. It's a battle, we call it, okay? But how to protect ourselves from these things? They must be born again, okay? Must have Christ in their heart. Because they were always talking about going to a relative that's far away that don't even know about Jesus, you know, and things like that. I did hear that. Yeah. And that's why it's important for us Christians to pray for our relatives, our bloodline, our generations. 
Now, when I was down there, I saw a vat of fire, huge vat of fire with liquid boiling hot lava and God's eternal judgment. And I saw demons laughing and dragging souls over. It just died from, from the earth that it was called the abominables. And they're thrown in this liquid fire. To burn forever and ever and ever. The people really need to know this. They need to know that there is no coming out of that place. And they need to know that on the day of judgment in the book of Revelations, God shall speak and death and hell shall come up in the universe. They don't go into heaven. That's in Revelations chapter 20. And there, when the books of life are open, those people in hell, their books was never washed in the blood of the Lamb. And that's what it's all about. We have a book of our life in heaven that right now, if you're not born again and you're not saved, what happens? They keep recording your bad deeds. You just know that. But when you get born again on the earth and that blood washes you clean, that record's taken to heaven by angels. And then it's recorded in, in your book. But all these old things here, angels blot out all your sins and all your old transgressions. It's a Bible. It said, I even, he, I, even I am he that blotteth out all your old transgressions. And then these pages become crimson red. And then they take your book and they record in your book the minute you got saved, the sermon you heard, they record everything that God did. And they close the book up and they take this before the, book, the throne of God.